Can't you go and say good night to me? So what is it? You're going to give me the silent treatment the rest of our marriage, huh? <sighs> Logan, I'm sorry. I promise I'll never do it again. Well, I should hope not. All the irresponsible things you've ever I done. I wasn't gone that long. Two or three hours? Jamie's seven months old. He can't take care of himself. I mean, what if he'd gotten sick? I don't even like to think about a fire, but what if Nothing he'd gotten... Nothing happened, and Jamie's all right. Nothing happened, and Jamie's all right. I got to see my movie, and everything's right with the well, world. I was bored in this apartment, and I did try to get a babysitter. Mrs. Harris was busy, Geraldine was in bed, April and Draper weren't home, and I know Jamie, he's a very good baby. I knew he would sleep all night, and I don't feel bad about what I did. You have a responsibility to that child, which... Baby, I'm sorry about the terrible thing I did, and I promise I will never be stupid again. Well, I hope you mean that. I do. Jamie will never be left alone, really. Raven, your job as a mother is not to see that he has a sitter when you decide to go out. You're supposed to care for him yourself. I mean, he needs you. But it's hard for me, don't you understand? My whole life, I've always had people take care of me. And now all of a sudden I have to accept responsibility for somebody else's life. I well, just don't know how to do it. can't help thinking that if you'd spend more time with him, you would find that you were a good mother. You might even find it's a rewarding feeling. Well, I just feel alone, and I'm just not very much of a homebody. I'd like to spend more time with you. You know I would. Yeah, you're so busy. It's campaign now. You never get home before midnight, and then you're so it's two, two more months. Two more months, that's it, and then it's over. I'm very sorry I neglected Jamie. I'm just very selfish. You see, there's just something in me. I, I want to do what I want when I want it. Well, you can't. You gotta grow up. Yeah, you know what growing up means to me? Getting old, so nobody wants me. Except me and Jamie. Would I appeal to you when I'm old and wrinkled? I like old wrinkles. <laughs> Will I appeal to you as much as I do now? I don't think right now is a very good test. Let's get some sleep, huh? For heaven's sake, Mrs. Swift. A delightful surprise. Thank you. I didn't expect you tonight. Is your uh, husband parking the car? My husband's parked the car at City Hall. He has to work late with the mayor. Uh -huh. So I thought I would come here and dine alone. So if you don't mind, could I have a table for a woman? As a matter of fact, I, I, I wouldn't mind because, uh, you see, I was just about to have a private supper in my office. But my dinner date just canceled, so uh, I was wondering if you would like to uh, join me. I would be delighted. Mickey, take care of things, will you? Sure thing, Mr. Dorn. Mm -hmm. What'd you get for some more champagne? Well, I never say no to champagne. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is such a good idea. Why didn't you think of this before? Oh, well, it was my wife's inspiration. Oh? Yeah, she was despairing of us ever having a private dinner. Oh, look what I did. <laughs> No and for uh, you. right, so she suggested that we have a table in here in my office. It's quite a good idea. Oh, now look what oh. happened. The well has run dry. We can't have that, can we? No, we certainly can't have that. Did you know I made a movie that Sir Lawrence and Lord Olivier was going to be in? Yes, he was going to be my co star. Can you imagine? But he changed his mind or something. Look, are you sure that Elliot isn't here? Did he say he was going home? Miss, I just work here. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Nola Patterson. Oh, 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 oh look what so you did to my sorry. dress, you so rummy. Pumped. Where's the powder rum? Right over there, miss. Sarah, for God's sake. Who 
Well, hello. I'm so pleased to meet you at last, Mrs. Dawn. This is Mrs. Dawn, isn't it, Elliot? Oh, sir, you know very well this isn't Margot. Margot couldn't come tonight, so, uh, because she had to do something else. Oh, I see. So you found a substitute for yourself. What a shame you couldn't do better than this painted little tramp. Oh! Strike me, you little... Calm down now, ladies. There's no reason for this upset. Elliot, who is this person? Raven, this is a friend of mine, a former employee, as a matter of fact. Oh, why don't you be more exact, Elliot? Why don't you tell her I was your domestic servant? Oh, well, I could have guessed that. She certainly looks servile. Ladies, I don't have to remind you that there is a dining room, a public dining room behind that door. Now, you don't want to attract any more attention than necessary, I'd right? I'd like to attract the hair right out of her head. Elliot, if you don't throw this woman out of this room immediately, I'm just going to have to do it myself. Oh, you'd be very welcome to try, ducky. Listen, Sarah, stop this now. You had no right to barge in here like this. If you, I know you wanted a reference, but you could have called me oh, first. A reference? Well, I can guess what for. Wait a minute. I know you. I saw your picture in the paper just the other day. You're the wife of that man that's running for something. Elliot, will you please get this woman Who out is of here? He now? Let me see. He's such a nice-looking man. I can remember thinking, what a shame he has such a cheap tart for a wife. I said stop this now, Sarah. Raven, if you don't mind, I'd like to speak to this lady for a second. Well, you can just speak to her for the rest of the night. Here, you can have a choice. Now, oh, isn't that wonderful? Here, here's another. Here. <laughs> splendid, splendid person. Well, my word. You're actually home when you said you'd be. Earlier, aren't you proud of me? Yes. Hi, Jamie. Your grandma taking good care of you, huh? Has Logan come home yet? No, he hasn't. And think of what a nice surprise it would be for him. To find both his son and his wife waiting for him when he arrived. The re reason all our evenings have been spoiled is because of him. From what he says about this campaign trail of his, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Is that what you two have been quarreling about? Who said we've been quarreling? <laughs> oh, my dear Raven, these walls fairly vibrate with controversy. I can feel the dissidence in this house. I can even see it in your faces. Oh, come on. Don't make it sound like we've been at each other's throats. We haven't been together long enough to have a good fight. Raven, what's that? I know that something's going on here, and frankly, I'm worried. It's bound to affect the campaign. Yes, well, it affects me, too. Yes, I know. I know something is affecting you. And frankly, I hate to think of what that might be. What are you talking about? I'm sorry. I've tried to stay out of it, and I've tried not to think the obvious. But sometimes that's difficult. Your behavior, your late hours that you keep, your strange, unexplained disappearances. What are you getting at? Raven, tell me the truth. Are you seeing another man? me of something like that? It was a question, not an accusation. The answer is no, say so. But if it's yes, perhaps you'd like to confide in me. Confide in you? I should ask you to leave. No, surely you wouldn't want to alienate so competent a babysitter. How could you possibly make such a suggestion? Logan and I have only been married four months. And when is infidelity permissible, Raven? Six months, a year? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. How could you possibly think such a thing? I'll tell you why. Because it happened before with my son. Kevin. Oh, yes. Well, you've been brooding about that ever since, haven't you? You've hated me ever since that whole thing happened. That's ridiculous. I've never hated you, Raven. I've always treated you like my own daughter. And I haven't loved Jamie any less, despite knowing that he isn't Kevin's son. Oh, yes. You're just crazy about Jamie. Logan's just crazy about Jamie. April Scott's crazy about Jamie. The whole damn world's crazy about Jamie. Now that I've produced him, I don't even matter. That's absolutely absurd, and it has nothing to do with what we're discussing. Oh, yes, it does. Do you know why Logan is sulking? Because I left Jamie alone in this apartment for two hours. You did what? What 
in heaven's name was so important that you had to leave? None of your damn business. Well, hello, everybody. Hooray! Now the whole family is complete. Walk into the middle of something? No, 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 no. Of course not. Well, Logan, how did it go? All our political friends still optimistic about the campaign? A lot more enthusiastic and optimistic than I am. How you doing there, fella? Huh? How about giving your old dad a kiss so he can practice for the campaign tour? There, okay. You oh, don't look so scared. It won't be that unpleasant, will it? Hmm? Is that bad? No, that's kind of nice. Notice who he kisses first. Hi, how was your day? Boring, thank you. So was my evening. I went to a movie. Logan, you said something about a campaign tour. Did you mean that literally? I think the party means it very literally. It was the main item on the agenda tonight. They want me to go on a speaking tour, and if the schedule they gave me is correct, there we go. I'm going to be in about 15 towns at the same time. Are you serious? Yeah, I got the itinerary right in here. Looks like a laundry list. Here, you want to see it? My word. Oh, my dear, this looks like a lot of speech making. <laughs> what I don't understand is why a candidate for district attorney has to make speeches at all. Well, I'm supposed to be big in, on law and order, you see. It's going to be a large issue in the campaign this year. A lot of leniency going around. Judges letting people off with light sentences or no sentence at all. So murderers are getting away with murdering and crooks are getting away with crooking. <laughs> Got to sit down. Just thinking about all that talking makes me tired. Uh, look, they don't really expect you to drag your wife and child up to all these places, do they? I didn't even think about that. I suppose you're right. I don't think that would be so good for Jamie, all those strange hotel rooms. Hello, and there's no reason why you should have to take yeah. Jamie. I mean, What's according to this, What's all told, you'll only be gone a week. That's right. Well, I'm sure we can make arrangements to take care of Jamie. I mean, between me, Mrs. Harris, and even April and Draper, for that matter. I'm sure there'll be no trouble there. No, no, we've imposed on people too much as it is, and for a whole week, mm -mm. Yeah. But, Logan, you must take your wife with you. That's elemental politics. Besides, you do want to go with your husband, don't you, Raven? Of course I do. Well, I don't want to spend a day away from my husband, much less a week. Don't you think we should follow her suggestion? I really want to be with you. Yeah, I guess. Well, sure, if we can manage it, it'd be great. Has your friend left yet? Yeah, could I have uh, some more coffee in the check? Sure. Thank you. Mr. Swift. Mm hmm. I know you must be terribly busy, but would you mind if I joined you for a moment? I'll be my guest. Thank you, I, I did stop by at your office and they told me I'd find you here. I won't take up too much of your time, but uh, it is important. Well, how can I help you, Miss... Uh... Albright. Albright. Sarah Albright. And uh, it's how I can help you, Mr. Swift. Well, I'm all ears. <laughs> well, I've read an awful lot about you recently in the newspapers, and I think you've done a smashing job as district attorney. Thank you. Ah, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that you deserve to win a full term of office in November. The reason for this intrusion is because I want to help you to win that election. Well, if you'd like to volunteer to work on the campaign, that'd be splendid. Uh, I'll give you the no, number of my uh, campaign manager. I have some advice for you, Mr. Swift. Oh. Invaluable advice. Well, I'm all ears. I know how important a stable home life is to a politician. Oh? It's about your wife, Mr. Swift. I'm here to warn you to keep a closer eye on her activities. She's doing things you really ought to know about. Do I make myself clear? Unicorn. Uh, can I ask who's calling, please? One moment. Mr. Dorn. Uh, it's for you, but I didn't say you were here. Who is it? Mrs. Swift. And I will uh, deliver the drink with my apologies. Okay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and how are things at the Unicorn tonight? Quite as exciting as last night, <laughs> I'm pleased to say. <laughs> well, that's what you get for keeping too many women on a string, my dear. You know, uh, about this Sarah, was she really your maid? Listen, I can assure you, my precious, it was only a very casual thing. 
just a little diversion, you know, between vacuum cleaning and so forth. But anyway, I met her a long time ago before I met you. I see. It all finished a long, long time ago. Uh-huh, I see. Well, I just hope that Mrs. Dorn never found out what was going on right under her nose, because she would have vacuum cleaned you right out of her house. <laughs> Listen, Raven, I hope you were not too upset about what happened last night. <laughs> oh, me? Listen, uh, there's nothing I like better than a little excitement. Oh, yeah, so I've noticed. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, there is something I like better than a little excitement. That's a lot of excitement. We really have to see more of each other. Uh, but unfortunately, it's going to be not easy for either one of us. Listen. What do you mean? My husband is going out of town on a statewide campaign tour. Really? Mm-hmm. Fifteen cities in five days. But, of course, his dutiful wife is going with him. She is? Uh-huh. Of course. I mean, how would it look if a candidate went without his wife by his side? Uh, of course, the baby can't go. Seven-month-old baby can't travel, but... Uh... Listen, uh, maybe I didn't hear you well enough, Raven, but what is so good about this good news? Oh, didn't I tell you? <laughs> um, I have a terrible cold. Yeah, you do. You do sound awful, Raven. I mean, you, you should you should take better care of yourself, Ruth. Well, look, the, the cold hasn't really developed yet. I mean, I don't want it to develop too soon because my husband might decide to cancel the tour. But it is going to be really terrible, and he's going to have to go all by himself. Mm. Well, that sounds very nice, uh, Raven. But uh, the fact that you're as free as a bird uh, doesn't mean that I'm equally available at this time. Listen, you better be. Because I've been going through an awful lot of trouble just to set this whole thing up. So if you will come through... <laughs> well, listen, listen, baby. Uh, let, me, let me call you back. Uh, I've got some customers coming in, okay? I'll call you back. Bye. It's just going to be insane. Oh, oh, thank, thank you. you. We have 15 towns in five days. We're not going to have time to pack or unpack. Now, that is a wild schedule. What do you do, Logan? Do you make the same speech in every city? Yeah, about the same. I have to remember the name of the place, though. You know. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, can't tell you what a pleasure it is being back in good old... Uh, Chicken Falls. Chicken Falls? Uh, my campaign manager says we regionalize the speech after the opening. Oh, and how exactly do you regionalize it? Well, if we're in some suburb where the crime rate is zilch, I can't really scream at them about putting all their crooks behind bars. Well, then what, well, what the hell do you say? Oh, something like, uh, well, folks, you've got a nice, peaceful little community here in... Um, uh, the Chicken Falls. Chicken Falls, right? <laughs> now, <clears throat> you don't want a lot of hoodlums coming up from Monticello and... Ravishing your banks and robbing your women, do you? Now, if you don't want the Monticello bad guys up here, you know what you got to do. You got to elect a strong district attorney. You're going to put them someplace where they can't do the God fearing people of Chicken Falls any harm. That's a wonderful speech, and I will vote for you in a second. By the way, what are you going to do with Jamie while you're away? Is that uh, Lady Whitney, Mrs. Uh... Mrs. Harris? She said she'd take him for three days. Well, what are you going to do with the other two? Well, I hope she'll take him the other two, but if she doesn't, I guess she may just have to take him to her place, and God knows what that's like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not too crazy about that idea myself, leaving him alone in a strange house. Well, uh, too bad uh, you're doing most of your traveling during the week. I'd love to have him for a couple of days, you know, over the weekend or something. You know, it's really a shame you can't take some time off. Draper says you've been working off the hard. Well, Margo's been after her to take some time off. Um, to stop her from working those 16-hour days. Whoa, look who's talking. Draper has worked later than me, excuse me, later than I, uh, almost every night this whole week. Well, I still wish we could take him on the campaign tour. Then I wouldn't have to make any speeches at all. Just hold him up, show him to the audience, and say, any man with a child like this deserves your vote, right? Mm -hmm. right. Don't be silly. Hey, look, is there any chance you could take him, Louis? No, there's not a chance going to be bad enough with all the traveling. Can you imagine packing 500 diapers? Mm, yeah, it does sound a little impractical. Maybe the other, di other idea isn't so bad, though, huh? What idea? Well, uh, taking a couple of days off. Are you serious? Would you really consider taking him? Well, you said that uh, Mrs. Harris can take him for three days, right? And, yeah. Well, there is a holiday coming up, so I have some time coming to me. Uh, what do you think, Draper? That would be terrific. Mm -hmm. Do you hear that? Well, it would sure be great as far as I'm concerned. The thing that's been worrying me the most about this campaign tour is whether or not I can trust Mrs. Harris. Well, look, I do have to talk to Margot first. Well, I don't think Margot's going to give you a hard time. 
But I think what she had in mind was a uh, vacation. Oh, well, now, listen, we don't want to foul up any vacation plans, you guys. Oh, wishful thinking. Draper's idea of a vacation these days is not working on Sunday. You think I've been eager about work? You should check out my husband here. Yeah, he told me he's got to make his fortune now so he can pay, pay his fuel bills this winter. Yeah, they're going to be something, too. I hope our apartment is warm this winter. I catch cold so easy. As a matter of fact, you know, I think I'm getting one right now. Yeah, you didn't tell me about that. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a mm -hmm. tissue? Uh-huh. Oh, I'm sorry. Right up there. Oh, thanks. You want a cookie? You want a cookie? I'm enjoying it. You know, Logan, you are going to win this election, I know, because the man that is running against you is so unattractive. It's not a beauty contest, Raymond. Well, I know, I know. But you're going to win anyway. <laughs> Well, I think you can count on four votes here, anyway. Well, you'd have five if Jamie could vote, but he seems to be getting a little sleepy. You think maybe we could bring him upstairs? Yeah. yeah. I guess it is time to put him to bed. I oh. told Logan he would just be in the way if he were up. Well, no, not at all. I love having him, but it is getting late. Must be past your bedtime. Okay. 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 Oh, thank Come you. Come on, time to go to bed. He's heavy. Have a little adult conversation around here. It's a trouble with having a kid. They always get all the attention. Oh. Could we get you back, though? Did you talk to Raven yet about, uh, you know, adopting Jamie legally? No, I haven't had a chance. I hadn't seen her since I talked to you at lunch today. I came right here, met her here. Might be a good time to bring it up. I mean, I don't have the papers with me, but uh, you could get the ball rolling. Sure. Hey, something wrong? No, no. There's not going to be any objection, is there? Uh, I mean, you know, considering the fact that you are Jamie's legal father. I mean, natural father. I don't know why she would object, like you say. It's just a formality. Right. All right, all right. You got me. I'm thinking about something else. Something that happened today at the restaurant after you left. I know. You forgot your money and couldn't pay the bill. Well, I wish. No, it's... Woman came over and sat down at the table. I'd never seen her before. She had uh, an accent, English, I think. What'd she want? She wanted to tell me something. Didn't stay long, just a minute or two, just long enough to tell me to keep an eye on my wife. What? That was all. No details, no accusations, just keep an eye on Raven. Said she was doing things that I would not like. The implication was very clear. It's a crank, Logan. You're DA. I mean, you deal with these people all the time, every hour on the hour. Oh, yeah. I deal with cranks every day at the office. Not very often in restaurants. Oh, Just yeah. don't waste any time thinking about it. Yes. Right. April was right. Fell asleep the minute he hit the bed. Ah, drat. <laughs> Why the silence? talking about me, weren't you? You stopped the minute I came in the room. No, as a matter of fact, we were talking about Jamie. Uh, see, I told you. You're lucky you don't have a kid. They get all the attention. Oh, come on, Raven. I wouldn't mind. If I had a baby as cute as Jamie, I'd lavish all my attention on him. We were discussing some legal problems that concern Jamie. Legal? What's legal about a seven-month-old baby? Well, Logan and I were, were talking about Jamie's legal status. It's not as clear as it could be. <laughs> Lawyers. Aren't they awful? Well, they're not all so bad. You know, Jamie has only one legal parent. That's you, Raven. Logan thought it would be a good idea if he had a full set. I don't understand what all this was about. Well, I think it would be a good idea if I adopted Jamie. Make sure that he has all his legal rights. Well, what kind of legal rights are you talking about? want him to be able to inherit my vast fortune if I'm run over by a truck, gotcha. stuff like that. You know, it's just a formality. It's the kind of stuff that a lawyer would be concerned about. It's okay with you, isn't it? Sure. Why shouldn't it be? Hello. Hello, my poor baby. How are you? Raven, how are you doing? I'm fine, but you must be a bundle of nerves after last night. Uh, it was an uncertain experience. Well, I was so worried about you because if that man had shot you and not the other guy, what would I have done? 
I can assure you I'm intact. Good, good. And you can ask me how I feel. Raven, how are you feeling? Awful. I feel like I'm going to die. Really? Mm -hmm. What well, seems to be the problem? Remember the other night I told you I was coming down with something? Yes, and Dr. Dorn offered to make a house call. Well, Dr. Dorn, I have a stomach ache and chills, and I think I have a fever of 105. Oh, that really sounds serious. Well, it is serious, and my husband is going to walk in this door any time now and want to take me on this campaign tour. And, you know, I really hate to disappoint him, but I think I'm going to be too sick to go. Mm. Well, there's not much we can do if you're uh, lying in bed. No. No, I think the best thing is to just stay in Monticello and get plenty of uh, bed rest. <laughs> Listen, I'm on my way. Put the bags by the door, and I'll be there in 15 minutes. Okay, but could you stop at the drugstore and get something for me? Get s What else do you need? You've been packing for three days. I know. I need some aspirin, honey. I don't feel very good. Raven, I'm home. I'm in the bedroom. What are you doing? We're supposed to be leaving soon. Oh, Logan, I just don't even have the strength to go to the closet and get a dress. I feel All right. terrible. All right, what's the matter? Remember, I told you I was coming down with something at April. Yeah, I thought that was your hay fever acting up. No, I got a bug. I just feel achy all over. I want to die. Yeah, well, before we make the funeral arrangements, have you managed to take your temperature? I didn't want to know what it would be. I'll get the thermometer. By the way, I stopped in at Draper's office on the way over here and picked up the paperwork for Jamie's adoption. Is that necessary? Look, you're my husband. That means you're Jamie's father. Yeah, well, I just want it nice and legal. <laughs> well, do we have to do that now? It's no big deal. You sign the paper, I get it notarized, I take it to a judge and he signs it, then Jamie is legally my little boy. Mm -hmm. I wish we could get it done before we have to go, and it is the first item on the agenda when we get back from this tour. Mm -hmm. I hope you're going to be well enough to go on a trip. I want to see the paper. I can't understand you, and you can't uh -huh. talk and have the thermometer work at the same time. I want to see the Why, right. We could play charades. How many words? I don't want to... You can read the papers on the plane. Logan, please! Okay. I want to All right, them. all right. Put it back in your mouth. Keep your mouth closed. Okay, here we go. This uh, first page is the only thing that really concerns you. That's where you sign. We can take a look at the thermometer now. Yeah, you read this. Okay. Oh, honey, I can't understand a word this says. Raven, I'm just going to have to explain You've it got you. a fever of 102. Well, if it's 103, let's sell. Well, that's not funny. You're really sick. I better call Dr. Lacey. Oh, wait a minute now. You're I too just sick have a to virus. travel, too. I'm going to have to cancel the whole tour. No, wait, why? Because I can't leave you alone like this. i got to take care of you. Well, what are you going to do? Bring me orange juice and change the television channels? You've got to go I will tour. issue a press release that says the candidate as, is at the side of his stricken wife. I'll look like Mr. Domestic and the voters will love me. Logan, the voters want to see and hear you. Now, you just let me lie here and rest for a couple of days, and I'll, I'll join you later, okay? You sure? I mean, being sick and alone is the pits. No, I don't just, I don't want you to change your plans. You go. I don't know. Well, come on, come on. I don't want you to lose votes because of me. You go, you go. It's, it's your career. Uh, well, look who's here. Hello, Hello Geraldine. Good. I'm so glad I got nice here before your you. flight left. You came all this way just to see me. Oh, I most certainly did. I told Raven I would if I got the chance. Uh, uh, Mrs. Saxon. Um, you're looking lovelier today than when we first met in uh, Logan's office. You uh, remember my associate, Cliff Nelson? Oh, yes. Yeah. How do you do? Very well, thank you, now that you're here. I spotted you as soon as you walked in the airport. Of course, everybody in Monticello knows you. I bet everybody in Washington knows you, too. Uh, although you haven't been there for quite a while. No, not in some time. In any case, I told Raven that I would... Where is Raven? home in bed, unfortunately. What? 
Oh, uh, Mrs. Saxon, maybe you ought to uh, take her place on this trip. I bet you those hicks upstate would really flip if they knew that the famous Geraldine Saxon was on the speaker's platform. Uh, well, for heaven's sake, what's the matter? Is she ill? She's got a high fever. I told her to call a doctor if she's feeling any worse. But you know how stubborn Raven is about things like that. Look, and I'm so sorry to hear about this. Uh, Mrs. Saxon, um, I've been an admirer of yours for quite some time now. In my opinion, your family is at least the second most influential political family in the country. Yes. Well, for heaven's sake, it seems to me there must be something I can do. What about the baby? No, Jamie's fine. He's over at the Scots. There's just nobody to take care of Raven. That's what concerns me. I think I should call her. Uh oh Maybe I can help in some small Cliff, way. please. No, I think it would be better if, if I went over there to see her. That's would you like that? What I was going to suggest. Let me give you the key to the apartment just in case she's asleep and doesn't hear the doorbell. Logan, what an awful time for her to get sick. No. I, I hope this isn't going to interfere now with this campaign tour. I, I have an idea. Um, why don't I take Logan's place on this tour? And that way you can go home and uh, take care of Raven. Well, what would you do in all those hick towns? Well, uh, for you, boss, I'd make the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. uh, besides, I love greasy chicken dinners. Uh, Logan, you worry about the campaign. I'll take care of Raven. Thank you so much. I'll call you as soon as I get there. Bye, Cliff. Bye, boss. I don't like being here. It's, uh, I mean, it's your bedroom. <laughs> You've never been in another woman's bed before. <laughs> you know, we should have gone to that motel. Oh, as tacky as it was, at least we could have been on our own. We are on our own. And it's very safe and very comfortable. And besides, it's very practical. I come. Because I'm supposed to be very ill with a raging fever. <laughs> and as soon as my husband gets to the first tacky hotel on this campaign tour, he's going to call me up and want to know how I am. Oh, I see. So the sick, dutiful wife has to answer the phone, right? That's right. It's the way it has to be. <laughs> you weren't quite as ingenious as I. I told Margaret I was going up to this fishing lodge <laughs> that didn't even have a phone. Well, you're a man. You can give an excuse like that. I can't. And besides, I think you ought to congratulate me on my excuse. Did I tell you about my temperature? What about it? <laughs> Logan wanted to know my temperature, so I took the thermometer when he wasn't looking and stuck it in a cup of hot tea. <laughs> Brave, and you're yes. a very naughty girl. Yes, I am a very naughty girl. And I have a very high fever. Trying to hold the tin. 